Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to perform a buckling analysis on a more complex structure. So to do that, we're going to go into the ANSYS module. We're going to start by defining the element type as 181 shell 181. You can check it here as element type 181 shell. We're going to define the material properties for aluminum, so material property. Young's modulus for material 1, 6.9810 pascals. Then material properties, PRXY, uh, Poisson's coefficient for material 1, 0 0.33. And material properties, density materi for material 1, 2850. These properties can vary, they can be varying a little bit. It's not dense, it's dense, sorry. This property can vary a little bit, but for a generic aluminum, uh, they would be fine. So for now, or now we're gonna go and define the sections for a shell, lay up, add a bit. We're gonna do a 15 millimeter thickness. So here we're gonna go 15 divided by a thousand. ID one, and we're gonna go to modeling, create an area arbitrary no a rectangle by dimensions and what we're going to do here is create a rectangle by the coordinates so 0 0.0 on the beginning 0 0.2 on the x direction and 0 0 0.125 on the y direction this will create a rectangle and we're going to use we're going to create two cuts in the middle of this rectangle so for that we're going to go to working plane offset two key points we're going to select these two key points and have the working plane in the middle of these two key points that will automatically put a line between them and put the working plane in between of the, in the middle of that line. In order to make this cut, we're gonna use, well, we have to have first have to orient the working plane. In order to do that, we have to have the X and Y, the plane of the working plane as a knife in the, the desired direction, using it as a knife. So we're gonna go here on this thing, put 90, and we're going to look in here and see what uh, rotation we have to perform in order to have that. So in this case, it's rotating 90 degrees around the X axis. So we have the X and Y aligned with the X axis global. Once we have that arranged, uh, uh, we're going to go to operate booleans, divide areas by work plane. We're going to define that by a working plane. I advise you, I highly advise you after each one of those operations, performing a number comma key points. We're going to have it, we'll have it here done. Then we're going to do the same thing when we repeat the operation work plane aligned with key points. Select these two key points, not aligned, I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to do this align. If you make this align, you're going to align the your working plane to those key points. That's a mistake. So go back and align if you make a mistake with global cartesian then work in plane offset to key points select these two offset that there and use the by increment again and rotate this plane which would be rotating around the y-axis and that pretty much would be it and then areas by work plane we select both of these areas and we do again a num merge comma key points num merge comma key points and for now we're what we're going to do is create a, an, a cross an x downwards for that we're going to go and do copy key points we're going to select all these three and five key points and we're going to copy them on the z direction at minus 50 divided by a thousand I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull this, raise the hidden, and cl can click on that. So we can use the G plot, the global plot, G plot, in order to kind of orient ourselves better. So we're going to start creating areas here. For example, we're going to do this one here, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to create this other area, one, two, three, and four. Here we don't have a sharing line, so what we're going to use is another operation, Boolean operation. This is divide area by line. We're going to select that area. We're going to hit OK. Select that line. We're going to separate those into two areas. 
So we're going to do now merge again. After we do that, we're going to fi finalize by doing this like that. And we have all the model created. We can look at it with a plot. Now we're going to go to meshing, meshing, mesh attributes. We can do picked areas or all areas. So the properties are going to be those. We all have those properties defined. We're going to go to the AE size for area element size, comma all. And we're going to put 10 millimeters, so 10 divided by a thousand. And we're going to do an A mesh, comma all. Here we have our mesh model. We can check it with the E shape, one, one. We can see it with the thickness. So we're going to go back to revert that zero, zero, replot. And now that we have the model properly done, we are going, you can actually check the connections if you need, but our model is basically fine. If you need to check if there's no double lines, you can check with the line list. If you don't get any double lines in these areas, our model is completely correct. So now we're going to go to the A plot and we're going to put the displacement restriction at the bottom of these, at the corners, at these four points. And we're going to do a all degrees of freedom zero. And for the beginning, we're going to put an acceleration of 9.81 meters per square second. That would be the gravitational acceleration. And we're just going to perform the solution for the static analysis. So we will go here and we look at the results. This is m moving barely any bit. And of, of course, it makes sense that the highest displacement takes place where these um, corners are somehow in the like counter beam, cantilever beam state, which makes sense. But now we're going to go to the analysis. We're going to perform the eigenbuckling analysis option gonna get the first mode and we're gonna solve and when we go to general processing we go read results by peak it's gonna be a very big value we're gonna read it we're gonna plot it plot the sum, summation and we're gonna see that first of all we have 222,336 that would be the amount of uh, force that we have to increase for its own weight in order for this structure to have buckling um, we're going to look at the PL vect. So here you can see how this would be, this bucket will be taking place. It's a little bit more com of a complex pro uh, process, but what you can know exactly is that the buckling will take place because of these surfaces, the vertical ones, the ones that are like in the Z direction, because that was those would be the ones that are being compressed. So now we're going to go again into the solution and we're going to create a complex, uh, state of a um, load so we're going to put 10 g's on the x direction by 9.81 we're going to put 520 let's put 20 g's on the z y direction and on the z direction let's put 8 multiplied by 9.81 so that will be an acceleration state that combines x y and z directions with different values so that will be a complex uh, load state for this uh, structure. We go again to new sta analysis, static, don't forget that. We have to always so solve static first, solve. And then we go to general post-processing, uh, sorry, solution, new analysis again, eigenbuckling. We do again the solve. Once we did the static, we have to do the solve for the buckling. We did that. Once we're done, we go to general post-processing, we go to read results by peak, and now we have 10,001, the value is much smaller. We read it and we do the plotting of the deformation. This shape is, uh, is, is highly deformed because the elements that we're using are kind of big, but we're not interested in that right now. What we're interested in is, well, what you're interested in in a situation like this is that the frequency or the um, the value of the buckling is 10,000. The, the coefficient of before buckling is 10,000. You don't know, we don't know exactly if this coefficient co corresponds to X, Y, or Z. And well, here you would have, for example, in the X and Y directions, we would, we would have buckling 
on these surfaces that I'm selecting right now. So on the X direction, you will have buckling if it's embedded on one end and you're pushing or you have an acceleration on the X direction. On the Y direction, the same. Uh, and uh, for the same force or for the same acceleration, you would have buckling faster or easier on the X direction because the, sur the, the surface is longer in that direction than on the Y direction. And on the Z, you would have the intervention of these vertical areas. Nevertheless, uh, it is not easy to de determine who, what component is creating the buckling since it's a complex uh, load state and it's a complex geometry. What you could uh, do if you want to verify who is creating this buckling is because even if we analyze the vector displacement, it's not going to be obvious how is this happening. It probably would be this vertical, but it's not clear. So you could try to verify on each one of these um, by putting the force on each one of the directions. You could try to verify if you have buckling where and how by isolating the forces and they will have an idea who's creating that buckling uh, according to our geometry. Because as you know exactly, the buckling takes place only when there's compression. So that will be it for today's tutorial. We hope you enjoy this presentation. If you do, please uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for our videos. Thank you very much.